we were basically installing a new module called Harmony. But also, we were relocating a, a major solar array truss. And the real challenge was this truss element had been aboard the space station for, I believe, eight years. And we weren't sure, quite honestly, if all of this would work well. So the way the docking profile worked, we came up underneath the International Space Station and then did a backflip so that the crew inside the space station could take pictures of the belly of the shuttle to make sure that there were no issues. This is something that we started after Columbia. A little unnerving to be 600 feet away from the space station as a pilot and then lose sight of it because you basically do a backflip. I was really looking forward to shaking hands with Peggy Whitson through the space station hatch because it was the first time two women commanders had flown in space together. We're very happy to see each other. We see folks that we haven't seen for a long time. They've been, been up in space for, for months. But it doesn't last long because almost right away we've got to get into our follow-on tasks. The Japanese lab Kibo and the European lab Columbus were both on the ground in Florida ready to be launched, but we needed to get that hub that would hold them all together in space. And the first half of the mission just went like clockwork. The second part was to move the P6 array. The P6 solar array is serving as a supplier of power to the International Space Station. So rather than have electrical power lines like we have on Earth, we have our solar arrays that collect solar power at a pretty high voltage. It's very dangerous. As we built the space station out, we built this long truss that the solar arrays were intended to sit on. So we were moving the one that was sitting on the top of the space station out to the end of the truss and then unfurling it and allowing it to generate power. Of course, you never want to touch the solar array. It's always powered, 120 volts DC. Good motion. Continue. Continuing. Then we moved the truss out to the final location. Then it was uh, time to redeploy the arrays. Deploy on my mark. Two, one. We thought we were across the finish line, and that wasn't the case. I saw something that looked like a dark smudge on the solar array. In that moment, when we couldn't see what was going on, the array got bound up and actually tore in a couple locations because the guide wires had slipped out of their proper location and gotten tied up with each other. The solar array itself has little holes designed in it for guide wires. There were rips in the solar array that we needed to repair. And the engineers on the ground came up with a very, very clever, almost a MacGyver kind of solution, where we took existing wires and pieces of plastic that we had on the space station and built these cufflinks of various lengths. And then the plan was to go out and weave these cufflinks into the solar arrays so that when we fully extend them, those cufflinks will take the load of the stretching instead of the, the rips. So I had to pull onto the solar panel, but I also had to keep it at a healthy distance. Be careful. Yeah, I see it. OK, I am ready to maneuver when you guys are. Yeah, you need an extra hand out there, don't you? Yes, I do. And then also, I had to, with the other hand, install the, uh, the cuff link through a hole in the, in the solar panel. All right, big team. That's how you do it, right there. We got it, good job. Excellent. Beautiful. That was a beautiful day in space, right there. <laughs>